Neltharis is one of the dungeons coming in the new World of Warcraft expansion of Dragonflight. Within the Obsidian Fortress on the Dragon Isles lies the Great Forge of Neltharis. The Black Dragonflight were famed smiths. So much so, the newly awoken Jaradin thought that control of the vault was paramount. They were shocked to find this once seat of power empty. However, they did not let that deter them. They have since ransacked the treasures hidden there and set themselves up with fortifications. Seemingly nothing will stop their relentless pursuit of war against the dragons. If the Black Dragonflight is to rebuild, they must first retake their ancestral seat. This begins here, as a party of adventurers are recruited to delve deep into the vault and take out their leader. <laughs> The heat is unbearable. While dragons and flame giants may be at home here, our adventurers are surely not. They will have to make this quick. I wonder, is any of them a frost mage? Anyone? But pressing onward, our party faces their first challenge. Many eons ago, at the height of the conflict between dragon and giant, Chargath made himself a legend among his people. This veteran has trained scores of hunters and sounded the call on many a hunt. His bloodlust cannot be sated. He hungers for more. He seeks the glory of conflict to taste the thrill of victory once more. His confidence will be his downfall, however. He sounded the call on his last hunt upon fighting our stalwart five. But the adventure is only just beginning, and the licking flames offer no abatement. In the distance, the familiar hammering and seething of metal can be heard. It seems the forge is in use once more. Steadily, they make the approach, passing by one dragon edifice at a time. Forge Master Gorik is in command of this place now, and he will not suffer interruption. His passion for metalwork has become his sworn duty. The power of this forge will be put to good use in the crafting of the deadliest weapons for his kin. That is, unless he can be stopped. In his dying breath, he unleashes a word of power, bringing the very flames to life in a last desperate act. A sudden raging inferno swirls into the room and a chaotic and destructive fire elemental emerges. The party barely manages to temper the flames once more, to escape all-out destruction. This vault holds treasures beyond counting, not just the weapons, but other, more curious objects. There were more than just smiths among the ranks of the Black Flight, and many crafters created wondrous items. Some of these were alchemists that loved to experiment. As is often the case, not every concoction goes to plan, as we can plainly see from our next threat. A mammoth drank one such potion and was transformed into a humongous, stomping fire beast hell-bent on sheer destruction. 
It roars violently through these long, hallowed chambers, and its weight now threatens to crack the very foundations themselves. It is not so easy to corral a wild beast like this, but our party are not ones to turn from a challenge. With the beast rend asunder, the way is finally clear. Warlord Saga awaits now. She was looking for any way to empower her people. In her eyes, the dragons are her people's greatest nemesis. She will not rest until every single one is driven from the Isles. In this heart of the vault, has she finally found the means she so desperately sought? Our brave five are wise, however, and in the midst of the battle they grasp a few of these ancient weapons for themselves and wield them to her inevitable demise. While it may seem like just another Black Dragon facility, this dungeon holds much more wonder. We have to remember that this was the place where many of the ancient weapons we love were crafted, and first experimentations were made. This was most likely the place where the creation of the Drakthea first began. The Jaradin choosing this place to assault first was smart, in the sense that if they controlled it, they would have a huge advantage in the rest of their campaign against the dragons. But, to their knowledge, this would have been one of the most well-defended areas in the Isles. It was, we think, actually chosen because the Jaradin seemed to hate the Black Flight most of all. As to why that is, we will cover it in our upcoming video where we show the entire history of these flame giants. If this is where Neltharion made his first seat of power, and in the war against the Primalists created the Drakthea, it throws forth the question, why did he consider them a failure in the end? If he wished to make the ultimate soldiers, why then go on to create the chromatic flight? We have a theory here at the campfire. The Drakthea were born from dragons and mortal races combined. But since the mortal part of the mix often comes with heaps of free will, this probably didn't work out too well. If you wanted to create the ultimate weapon, you best make sure you're the one who controls it. As we saw in our last video, where we explored the whispers in the Nelthazam ruins, they did have the means to control the minds of lesser dragonkin. But as we also saw, it wasn't 100% foolproof. The dragons, however, are already controlled once, changed by the titanic arcane power that surges in the water made by the keepers. This most likely leaves them susceptible to further suggestion, and explains why so many of the dragons seem to get turned by external forces. Deathwing, Maligos, Kairos Dharmu, to name a few. The next main point comes more from the quests leading up to the dungeon itself. Now the Jaradin forces have been routed, and the Black Dragonflight once again has control of this ancient place, as well as the Citadel proper, what are they going to do next? Well, the next big moment for this wayward flight is choosing a new leader, both Sabalian and Rathian are vying for this seat. 
Thebalian was Neltharion's general and followed him, complicit in his crimes until they were separated in Outland, where he saw the error of his ways. He has since kept his brood safe and growing, ensuring a future for all of his kind, taking the visage of a human named Baron Sablemane. Rathian, however, is much younger and headstrong. While not immune to mistakes, well, setting Garrosh free, changing time forever in order to save everyone was kind of more than a mistake. He did, it seems, always have Azeroth's best interests at heart. He has shown himself to be resourceful, if not a little egotistical. We think there are merits to both, but would love to know what all of you think. Let us know in the comments. But once a leader is chosen, we do think this forge will become crucial in the fights to come. Once rebuilt, the weapons and creations made here could be invaluable for the upcoming threats that Nosdormu mentioned. It is our working theory that as the expansion goes on, coming back to the forge to learn the crafting secrets of the ancient black dragons to make some amazing gear would be a lot of fun. Made in the forges of Neltharis, tempered by the breath of a dragon, could be a really interesting legendary crafting mechanic going forward. I'm sure Blizzard thought of that too. Whether you love the idea of legendary crafting coming back or not, each and every dungeon so far is so much fun and so interesting. The lore feels so much more grounded. Each dungeon in the story has real weight and impact because it changes the world we actually live in forever. We cannot wait for more. Oh, and feel free to come back anytime.